So Ted Cruz has gone all in for Monsanto. Yep, Ted Cruz has now really answered that question that we had been asking here at Natural News for quite some time. We asked the question, how do all of the presidential candidates line up on the issue of GMOs and Monsanto? And uh, today, Ted Cruz said that people who are opposed to GMOs are, quote, anti-science zealots. In other words, Ted Cruz has become the Monsanto candidate of the political right, in effect mirroring the Hillary Clinton candidate, who is the Monsanto of the political left. So if Hillary Clinton is the bride of Frankenfood, which she is, uh, Ted Cruz is the Monsatan preacher, <laughs> because he he's preaching the uh the the satanic evil of of Monsanto and we'll get into some of the some of the bible and and religious implications of all of this given that that Ted Cruz is uh, uh, attempting to appeal to evangelicals in America and the religious right as it's called so uh first of all let me discuss Oh, and by the way, for the record, he said this in Iowa, at the Iowa Agricultural Summit. This was reported by the Washington Times. Uh, the exact quote from Ted Cruz is, quote, We shouldn't let anti-science zealotry shut down the ability to produce low-cost quality food for billions across the globe. That's his quote. Sounds like a talking point from Monsanto, doesn't it? It completely avoids... Any acknowledgement of the insecticide poison that's grown inside genetically modified corn or the toxic cancer-causing glyphosate herbicide that is used on genetically modified crops, such as soy. It completely avoids the genetic pollution potential catastrophe for the environment, as well as the environmental impact of glyphosate and agricultural chemicals that are traditionally used along with genetically modified crops. It also completely ignores the Seralini research, which showed that rats fed glyphosate or GMOs or both developed shocking, horrific cancer tumors that were very aggressive and they suffered organ damage uh, as well as other, other problems. So there is, there is a mountain of scientific evidence pointing to the toxicity of genetically engineered foods and the chemicals that are used to grow them. Ted Cruz ignores all of that, and in doing so, he invokes something. Well, he's saying that you do not have the right to self-defense against chemical violence. Now, this is interesting in particular because Ted Cruz is a pro-Second Amendment uh, uh, senator from Texas. Now, you probably know that I'm also pro-Second Amendment, uh, but I'm consistent in my thoughts. I believe that every individual has the right to self-defense against violence, including chemical violence. So I believe in the right to access honest and accurate food labels that disclose the GMO content so that an informed consumer can exercise the right of self-defense against chemical violence. Now, herbicides and pesticides are chemical violence. They commit violence at a cellular level inside your body with every single meal that you consume that contains those chemicals. So Ted Cruz, in other words, believes that Americans should have easy access to guns, but not labels. He thinks that food labeling is more dangerous than guns. And that's why food labels have to be hidden, a la Monsanto and the entire Dark Act effort to prevent Americans from learning the truth about what they're eating. So Ted Cruz, in doing this, he violates the constitutional principles that he claims to support. He violates one of the basic tenets of liberty, which is that people should be free to choose what they wish to do, but you can't have liberty unless you have accurate information to make the decisions, right? And you can't have accurate information if the labels are hiding the facts about the GMO content of the foods. So Ted Cruz, in effect, is anti-liberty, even as he's calling you anti-science. It's also laughable to think that Ted Cruz believes he's a scientist who is in any way qualified to comment on the science of genetically modified crops. He clearly has no idea whatsoever what he's talking about. I mean, he, he's a brilliant constitutional scholar. He's a brilliant lawyer. There's no question about that. He's a brilliant debater. He's 
but he's scientifically illiterate, which is actually, believe it or not, a very common trait on the right, on the political right. I've often said that people, people on the right, and I'm sure I'm going to offend everybody with this, but I've said, well, bureaucrats on the right are scientifically illiterate, while bureaucrats on the left are economically illiterate. That, that's, that's how you offend everybody in the same sentence. But it's true. You know, each party has its, uh, its areas of complete illiteracy or denial or delusion. And that, I think, science is really very much lacking on the, on the political right, just as economics are lacking on, on the political left. Ne- nevertheless, this is not a, a political discussion. So let's continue with what this all means. Now, Ted Cruz, being a man who claims to be a spiritual man, that means that in his mind, he believes in honoring God's creation, right? And yet, Monsanto, by genetically engineering these seeds, exhibits the arrogance of man, the domination of man over nature, the engineering of seeds to take something that was originally created by God's creation, to use Ted, Ted Cruz's beliefs, and then, and then gently and humbly altered by human beings over thousands of years. This was the selective breeding of corn, for example. It, it started as a grass, and it became corn over many, many, well, hundreds or thousands of generations uh, through selective breeding, which is compatible and harmonious with nature. But now Monsanto comes along wipes out the genetic code, or, or let's say overwrites it, dominates it, patents it, and now claims into a pro- intellectual property ownership over the seed that builds its own poison inside every grain. And that is what Ted Cruz supports? Really? That's why I've said in, in siding with Monsatan, Ted Cruz is committing spiritual treason against God. And that's the first time I've ever used that accusation against anyone, but Ted Cruz deserves it in this case. He is supporting an evil, evil entity, Mon- Monsanto, widely believed to be the most evil corporation in America, if not the world. The biotech industry in general has decimated the diversity of the seed supply in Texas and, and everywhere else as well. They bought up seed companies and shut them down. They've committed, in effect crop eugenics by wiping out different strains of seeds and dominating through intellectual property and aggressive aggressive legal maneuvering and threats and intimidation uh, especially against anti-gmo activists they have they have become the the agricultural bullies of the world to bully their way into position a a position of dominance over the the food supply and the seed supply in effect turning farmers into de facto indentured servants who must be obedient to their corporate masters. This is what Ted Cruz supports. And it is no coincidence that Ted Cruz's wife is also, of course, tied to Goldman Sachs, which is really mirroring the same attitude of domination and indentured servitude in the financial sector. Goldman Sachs commits financial arson and economic destruction that mirrors the kind of agricultural destruction we see exhibited by corporations like Monsanto. And so as, as, as Ted Cruz is calling you an anti-science zealot, he is actually selling his soul to the devil and siding with these entities, these corporations of mass human destruction that can only lead America into death and suffering and destitution and a, a third world collapse into a scenario that is, that is so desperate and a, a, a landscape that is barren, a nation that has fallen. That is the Ted Cruz vision for America when he sides with Monsanto. Those who promote the biotech industry also promote the forced ignorance of consumers through the so-called dark act, denying Americans the right to know what they're eating. And so they are desperately trying to pass a federal law that would outlaw statewide laws which require accurate food labeling of GMOs. They want to, in effect, criminalize honest food labeling at the local level. They want to keep all Americans in the dark by force, by government mandate. 
to force all people to be totally ignorant so that they keep inadvertently and accidentally buying GMOs that are poisoning them. And Ted Cruz supports that as well. So not only does he violate his constitutional principles, he also violates his biblical principles and is committing treason against God and nature. But he's also violating all the principles of liberty, the fundamental human right to liberty, which depends on the right to know what you're buying, what you're eating, what decision you're about to make. You know, when a consumer purchases a product from the store, they are, in, in effect, engaged in a contract. And the, the ingredients label is the offer. Here, we offer you this food in this box with these ingredients, and the consumer accepts that contract by choosing to purchase that food. But what Ted Cruz wants to put in place is a fraudulent contract that knowingly leaves out critical, crucial information for consumer health, thereby defrauding the consumer and yet passing the costs of cancer and disease on to that consumer who is defrauded through this deceptive contractual practice. And what does that remind you of? Deceptive contract that traps someone in a, in a system of, of deception. It sounds like a contract with the devil, doesn't it? Again, to invoke Ted Cruz's claimed ties to Christianity and the Bible, if he believed in biblical truth, then he would have to believe in full disclosure. He would have to believe in contractual truth. He would have to believe in the sanctity, the dignity of seeds and what he would call God's creation, Mother Nature. But he doesn't. He sides with an industry that commits, in effect, point-of-purchase contractual fraud and, and, and destruction of human health and crimes against humanity and nature every single day. That is Ted Cruz, a betrayer of humanity and an agent of Satan who has committed spiritual treason against God. That is Ted Cruz. And I say this as a Texan. I say this as a pro-Second Amendment person. I say this as a supporter of Governor Greg Abbott, who endorsed Ted Cruz. And yet I cannot stay silent when Ted Cruz attacks humanity, attacks our sensibilities, when he attacks the right to know what we're eating, when he attacks spiritual truth and he twists the truth and he calls people, the tens of millions of Americans who have legitimate health concerns about the cancer-causing chemicals, the pesticides, the herbicides, when he calls them anti-science zealots while he is siding with Monsatan, while he is practicing deception and destruction and furthering an agenda that will sicken and destroy the lives and health of millions of Americans, for him to stand there and claim that he is a Christian is a violation of God's principles that he claims to, to worship. He is, no, he is no son of God. He is no man of God. He is a man of deceit. He is a spiritual traitor, and he does not deserve your vote. Now then, who does deserve your vote? Well, at this point, we have a process of elimination. And by the way, in case you're wondering, none of this is scripted that I'm talking to you here. I, I never do scripted podcasts. Never. This is what I feel. This is what I believe. This is my commentary from my heart, from my spirit, speaking the truth as I see it. This is not scripted. I don't write scripts. I don't follow bullet points, nothing. I have an article up on, on the browser. That's it. But getting back to the question, who, who should you support? Well, I don't even like the word should so much, but let's eliminate the obvious choices of great evil that you must not vote for. And on the... Democrat side, that is obviously Hillary Clinton, the bride of Frankenfood. Strong, strong ties with Monsanto has openly come out in support of GMOs and biotechnology and, and is, you know, pro vaccine and pro depopulation and pro probably Goldman Sachs for that matter. All, you know, Wall Street banksters, all that. She's all that. Well, guess what? Ted Cruz now looks like the Hillary Clinton of the right. I'm not sure who, who's, 
who's better looking or worse looking for that matter, but philosophically, they're both ugly as hell. Ted Cruz is the mirror image of Hillary Clinton. She's female, he's male, she's left, he's right, but they both agree on, on Monsanto and GMOs and keeping consumers in the dark and poisoning Americans with toxic food. They both agree with that. They both agree with the banksters and, and supporting Wall Street and special interests. This is what they both agree on. This is why they are both a threat to the future of America. They are a threat to your health, to your families, to your children. They are a threat to the sanctity of our food supply. They are a threat to the very future of this nation because no nation can survive and thrive in a global competitive marketplace if their people are suffering from disease and medical debt and pain caused by a toxic food supply that is systematically poisoning them every day with every bite that they consume. And so Hillary Clinton and Ted Cruz must be rejected by the voters at at all costs at the voting booth. They must be rejected. So on the left, you have remaining Bernie Sanders. Now, Bernie Sanders, on the issue of GMOs, has a lot going for him. He's from Vermont, and Vermont is the state that passed the only GMO labeling law that's about to kick in. And Bernie Sanders has been publicly and openly opposed to some of the interests of the the GMO industry, not all of them, but he has openly supported GMO labeling, and that makes him unique among all the candidates. He is the only one who has openly promoted GMO labeling, the right for consumers to know what they're eating. And for that reason alone, he deserves serious consideration if this issue is important to you. Personally, I disagree with Bernie Sanders' economic policies. Remember how I said earlier that people on the left are economically illiterate while people on the right are scientifically illiterate. I believe that Bernie Sanders' socialism would be disastrous for the economy of America. But hey, here we are. Here we are in a country with few good choices remaining, aren't we? So I can't tell you. I can't tell you how to vote and what to do. But let's look at Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a wild card in in this equation, but he has at least had some tendencies to be pro-organic. Donald Trump is not a typical conservative Republican, not like Ted Cruz, and he's certainly anti-establishment. Now, to my knowledge, he hasn't spoken unambiguously and publicly about his position on Monsanto or GMOs or GMO labeling, and he may not until the election. Who knows? But he has at least shown a tendency to support organics. He serves organic food at at many of his uh, properties, let's say, hotels and and resorts and so on. And no doubt he probably eats organic himself. How else can he have so much energy at such, such an age? While Hillary Clinton's health seems to be failing, Donald Trump seems to be vibrant and healthy. I mean, even if you disagree with what he says, he's, he says it with, with energy. He's, He's not a man suffering from fatigue or disease, not at all. He must eat organic. And why wouldn't you, if, if you have all that money, billions of dollars, why wouldn't you eat the best food in the world? Even And Donald Trump, he's intellectually a very bright person. He knows. He knows that Monsanto's food is toxic. I guarantee you he's not eating it. I guarantee you he's choosing organic at every opportunity because he knows that organic food and superfoods are what can keep him going and help him win. But he still hasn't said publicly his position on GMOs, so we don't know for sure about Donald Trump. On this particular issue, it's still an unknown. So those are your options, folks. Ted Cruz has just taken himself out of the race and betrayed humanity. Hillary Clinton has always been a really a criminal for, for a very long time, and totally dishonest, totally incapable, and un- unlikable at every level. So it comes down at this point, sadly, our options are, are quite limited in this nation. It comes down to Bernie Sanders on the left and Donald Trump uh, on the right. A third party is not an option at this point. So it seems, no matter what you believe and how you feel about GMOs, your choice now comes down to Sanders versus Trump. That's an interesting choice. <laughs> and I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you how you should vote uh, on on that issue. 
or even share how I would vote on that issue, but it is, it is a vote for the future of this nation. Uh, and any vote that is against Hillary or against Ted is a positive vote as far as I'm concerned. So at least do that much. And I thank you for your time and for listening. And I do want to say, I do want to say, God bless America. And I do want to say that I and others who, who oppose this satanic biotech industry, we work in the protection of life. We work for food transparency and honesty and protecting the health of children and senior citizens and Americans, people all over the world. We want people to be healthy, to have the freedom to choose what they wish to eat, to have access to honest information. And we want America to be healthy so that it can be abundant. You cannot have abundance without health. No nation that systematically poisons its people has any real future because you can never afford the debt requirements that are needed to cover ongoing disease in a population that's being systematically poisoned by the food every single day. There's not enough money in the world to cover the costs of chronic disease caused by a poisoned food supply. If we do not fix this issue, if we do not stop poisoning our fellow Americans through this toxic food supply, America, its days will be numbered. It will not survive the onslaught of cancer and Alzheimer's and dementia and diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, liver disorders. It will not survive it for much longer. We're already $19 trillion in debt. We're drowning in sick care costs. The medical cartels help no one. They earn profits, but they do not prevent disease. They do not reverse disease. They profit from disease and suffering as our system plummets like a, like a speeding train toward a brick wall. This doesn't end well unless we can restore health through clean food and honest food that is nutritious and that can give rise to a generation of healthy, cancer-free Americans with good cognitive function that supports creativity, innovation, entrepreneurism, and abundance. That is what we need. And in this way, economic policy must stem from health policy and food policy. You cannot have good health unless you have clean food. And that's why I am now a leading forensic food scientist working for clean food for all of us. My name is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. My new book is called Food Forensics. Please check it out at foodforensics.com. My laboratory is called CWC Labs. And soon we will be offering analytical food testing services on a commercial basis to help other companies clean up their food supply. Thank you for listening. Please share this and please vote for anyone other than Hillary Clinton and Ted Cruz. Thank you. Hey, I've got a lot of amazing videos coming this year. Click subscribe now to stay informed when I release them. 